Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Vinodhani Kapoor, teaching in the Faculty of Management in Chandigarh. Today, we are going to discuss about the module Privacy Issues under the paper Management Information Systems. After completing this particular module, students will be in a position to develop an understanding of the concept of privacy. Understand what is the significance of these privacy issues in context of information technology and MIS. They will be in a position to understand what are issues that can affect privacy on the internet. We will also look at what are the different laws that are related to privacy and are defined in the Indian Constitution. We will very briefly discuss the concept of computer libel and censorship. In a world where information is available at the instant click of a mouse, information privacy and security are elements under crossfire. There is a surging demand for access to personal information in order to generate products that are suited to the taste of people. Security requires proactive knowledge of records and movements of transactions as a prerequisite for monitoring and control by the authorities. Information security and privacy create a challenge for the corporate on account of corporate governance where information is defined as the strategic asset and source of value to capitalize new business strategies. Privacy refers to safeguarding of the individual's rights when it comes to information. Considering the case that everything we do online, over the phone or with a credit card can be monitored and recorded. Now if this information is used abusively in a manner, how we might feel if we were filmed all the time, it compromises our ability to act naturally and freely. And hence, privacy can be defined as an individual condition of the life which is characterized by exclusion from publicity. It is the right to be free from the secret surveillance and to determine whether, when, how and to whom one's personal or organizational information is to be revealed. Privacy may be divided into the following four categories. In specific, privacy may be divided into four categories. The physical category, dispositional, decisional and informational. Physical privacy, it refers to restrictions on others to experience a person or situation through one or more of the human senses. Informational privacy, it refers to restrictions on searching for or revealing facts that are unknown or unknowable to others about oneself, the situation in which one could acquire information technology that shall generate or disseminate information about oneself. Decisional, it refers to restrictions on interfering in decisions that are exclusive to an entity. And fourthly, dispositional, it refers to restrictions on attempts to know an individual's state of mind. Technology has a major impact on the gathering, the storage, retrieval and dissemination of information. Its main ethical impact relates to accessibility or the inaccessibility and the manipulation of information. It creates the possibility of wider and simultaneous access to information. Recent advances in information technology threaten privacy and have reduced the amount of control over personal data. They open up the possibility of a range of negative consequences as a result of access to personal data. Computer information systems are vulnerable to physical attacks, electronic hacking and natural disasters with computer information systems serving as a vital lifeblood of many organizations managers must be aware of both the risks and the opportunities to minimize 
the risk to information systems let us look at different privacy issues the impact of the use of technology on the privacy of people manifests itself in various areas these shall include the electronic monitoring of people in the workplace it is done by the so called electronic eyes the justification by companies for the use of such technology is to increase productivity the interception and the reading of email messages it poses an ethical problem which relates to the private communication of an individual it is technically possible to intercept email messages and the reading thereof is normally justified by companies because they firstly see the technology infrastructure as a resource belonging to the company and not the individual and secondly messages are intercepted to check on people to whether they use the facility for private reasons or as to do their part of the job data banking the integration of personal information from a variety of databases will come into a central database now the main problem includes the fact that the individual is not aware of personal information that is being integrated into a central database the individual does not know how purpose for which the integration is affected or by whom and for what benefit the new database is constructed and whether the information is accurate to counter these problems the government passed the privacy protection act frequent shopper cards inside such a card a computer chip is buried that records every item purchased along with a variety of personal information of the buyer now this information obtained from the card enables marketing companies to do target marketing to specific individuals because he is buying habits as well as other personal information of the people are known another major threat to privacy it's posed by hackers and crackers who break who break into the computer system computer hackers are the unauthorized users who break into the computer system to steal to change to destroy information by installing dangerous malware without knowledge to the user their tactics and detailed technological knowledge help them access information which is very sensitive computer hackers also try to access your computer and private information directly if the user is not protected with a firewall they may monitor chat room conversations or even personal web pages predators can lure users into revealing the sensitive personal and financial information or even go to much worse extent let us now look at the concept of computer monitoring computers are used to monitor the productivity and behavior of millions of employees while they work computer monitoring is used by employers to collect productivity and efficiency data and build statistics about the productivity of each employee this is generally criticized by workers as it violates their privacy and personal freedom there are random checks conducted on the desktop and the laptops of employees to check what information they possess computer monitoring is widely criticized as it is an, an invasion of privacy and they do not know that they are being monitored and how the information is being utilized to exemplify considering a situation when an individual calls a hotel manager for a reservation the manager may be timed about the number of seconds he took per caller the time between the calls and the breaks taken to respond with the confirmation of bookings the conversion may also be monitored for quality checks and satisfaction working under constant surveillance is seen to increase the stress level of the employees and hinders their performance at peak hours computer matching 
computer profiling and mistakes in computer matching of personal data a controversial threat to privacy. Individuals tend to be mistakenly arrested and convicted and denied credit because of their physical profiles or personal data that have been used by profiling softwares to match them incorrectly with unethical and wrong individuals. Being subjected to unsolicited promotional material and sales contracts, the privacy gets violated. We'll now discuss privacy on the internet. While internet technology is a boon in countless ways, it may also prove to be disastrous if there's an infiltration by notorious users. It possesses new challenges for the protection of individual piracy. Information that is shared over the vast network of the World Wide Web may pass through different computer systems before it reaches the final destination. Each of these systems is capable of monitoring, capturing and storing communications that pass through it. It is possible to record every click of the mouse on the internet. Now these include the web searches that have been conducted, the websites and the web pages visited, the online content a person has, the items inspected or purchased over the web. Much of this tracking is done without the visitor's knowledge. Various advertising networks such as Microsoft Advertising, Yahoo, DoubleClick that are capable of tracking the browser behavior for numerous websites. A commercial demand for this information is virtually insatiable. It also enables the organizations to aggregate data on consumer responses to their products and services online and the visitor count. We'll take up the Instagram case. In December 2012, Instagram said that it had the perpetual right to sell users' photographs for advertising purposes without payments or notifications. Due to the strong reaction, Instagram bagged down. Cookies, these are small text files deposited on a computer hard drive when a user visits websites. Cookies identify the visitor's web browser software and track visit to that particular website. When a visitor returns to a site that he has stored a cookie, the website software will search the visitor's computer, find the cookie and know what the person has done in the past. This enables the website to customize their content for each visitor's internet. Websites that use cookie technology cannot directly obtain visitor's name and address. However, if a person registers at a site, the information can be combined with cookie data to identify the visitor. Web beacons. Web marketers used web beacons as another tool to monitor the online web behavior. Web bugs or beckons are tiny objects invisibly embedded in the email messages and the web pages that are designed to monitor the behavior of the user entering, visiting the site or sending an email. It captures the IP address of the user, the time of view of the web page and the duration, the type of browser and previously set cookie values. Spyware. These secretly install themselves on an internet's user computer by piggybacking on the larger application. Once installed, the spyware calls out to websites to send ad banners and unsolicited web material. It also reports users' movement on the internet to other computers. Photographs on the internet. Pictures taken by some phones and tablets including iPhones automatically attach the latitude and the longitude of the picture taken through metadata unless this function is manually disabled. Face recognition technology can also be used to gain access to a person's private data. The search engines. These search engines have the ability 
to track a user's searches. Personal information can be revealed through searches by the user's computer, the account or the IP address being linked to the search terms used. A search engine takes all of its users and assigns each one a specific ID number. Those in control of the database often keep records of where on the internet each member has travelled to. The Google search engine is given as an example of a search engine that retains the information entered for a particular period of 3 to 4 months of the year before it becomes obsolete for public usage. Yahoo follows in the footsteps of Google in the sense and it also deletes user information after a period of 90 days. Privacy on the Internet Let's take a supporting case study to understand. In November 2007, the social media giant Facebook pushed its limit of online marketing by introducing a controversial marketing ploy, the Beacon tool. Now using this beacon to track user browsing data and purchases from partner sites, Facebook then broadcasted this information to the user's network. The tool immediately drew criticism from the online community, claiming it's a violation of the privacy and breach of user agreement by the company. The moral issue of the case centers on privacy concerns of the new online advertising tool Beacon, which is embedded into a Facebook partner's website. For example, Overstock, The New York Times, Blockbuster. The tool recorded a Facebook user's internet activity and transmitted this activity back to Facebook, which then publicizes it across a user's Facebook network. Beacon was applied to all Facebook users by default, and then all users were prompted to opt out with a discreet opt out notice to block Beacon's third party data communication. Unless the user opted out quickly, sensitive user activity was broadcasted to Facebook's users' newsfeed. Users also had to visit each of the 44 Beacon affiliate websites to opt out of the program on each site individually to stop partner sites from transmitting their user data back to Facebook. Users were not permitted to disable all data sharing activity and Beacon tracked activity every time Facebook users accessed a partner website. Seeking new revenue to justify the company's recent exorbitant valuation and bring additional money to shareholders, this tool promised potential financial innovation. We will now look at what are the different privacy laws that are Present in India, the first being the Information Technology Act that came up in the year 2000. India's Ministry of Communication and Information Technology notified the Information Technology or the Reasonable Security Practices and Procedure and Sensitive Personal Data or Information Rules 2011 under the IT Act 2000. Section 43 of penalty and compensation for damage to computer system. This section provides protection against the unauthorized access of the computer system by imposing heavy penalty up to 1 crore. This section envisages civil liability in terms of penalty and compensation. If any person without permission of the owner or any other person who is in charge of a computer system or a computer network accesses or secures, downloads, copies or extracts or introduces or causes to be introduced computer virus, damages or causes to be damaged, disrupts or causes disruption, destroys, deletes or alters any information or computer or computer systems, he will be liable to pay damages by the way of compensation to the person so affected. Section 65. This is the penal provision as tampering with computer source documents which establish imprisonment 
up to three years or with fine which may extend up to two lakh rupees or with both without knowingly or unintentionally concealing, destroying or altering any computer source code used for computer or computer programs, systems or networks when the computer source code is required to be kept or maintained by law for the time being in force. Section 66 Protection Against Hacking has been provided under this section. As per this section, hacking is defined as any act with an intention to cause wrongful loss or damage to any person or with the knowledge that wrongful loss or damage will be caused to any person and information residing in a computer resource to be destroyed, deleted, altered or its value and utility get diminished. This section imposes penalty for imprisonment up to 3 years or fine up to 2 lakh of rupees or both for the hacker. Section 70. This section provides protection to the data stored in the protection system. Protected systems are those particular computers or systems or network which the appropriate government approve by issuing gazette information in the official gazette by declaring it as a protected system. Any access or attempt to secure access to that particular system in contravention of the provision of this section will make a person liable for punishment of imprisonment which may extend up to 10 years and he shall also be liable to pay the fine. Section 72 This section provides protection against breach of confidentiality and privacy of the data. As per this, any person upon whom powers have been conferred under the IT Act and allied rules to secure access to any electronic record, book, register, correspondence, information document or any other material discloses or any other person shall be punished with imprisonment which may extend up to two years with fine which may extend up to at least 1 lakh rupees or both. The Law of Contract These days, companies are relying on the contract law as a useful means to protect their information. The corporate houses enter into several agreements with other companies, clients, agencies or partners to keep their information secured on the extent they want to secure it. Agreements such as Non-circumvention and non-disclosure agreements, user license agreements, referral partners, agreements etc. are entered into by them which contain the confidentiality and the privacy clauses and also arbitration clauses for the purpose of resolving the dispute if arises. These agreements help them in smooth running of business. BPO companies have implemented processes like BS7799 and the ISO17799 standards of information security management, which restricts the quantity of data that can be made available to employees of BPO and call centers. The Indian Penal Code. It imposes punishment for the wrongs which were expected to occur till the last decade but it failed to incorporate within itself the punishment for crimes that were related to data, which has become the order of the day. The Privacy Protection Bill of 2011 It is a bill to provide for the right to privacy to citizens of India and regulate the collection, the maintenance, the use and the dissemination of their personal information and provide for penalizing or violating of such right and matters connected therewith or incidental hertu. The bill says, Every individual shall have a right to his privacy, confidentiality of communication made by him and including his personal correspondence, telephone conversation, telegraph messages, postal, electronic mail and other modes of communication. Confidentiality of his private or his family life, protection of his honour and good name, protection 
from search, detention, or exposure of the lawful communication between him and individuals, privacy from surveillance, confidentiality of his banking and financial transactions, medical and legal information, and protection of data relating to individuals. The bill gives protection from a citizen's identity theft, including criminal identity theft, which is referred to as posing as another person when apprehended for a crime, financial identity theft, which refers to using another identity to obtain credit, goods and services, etc. The bill mandates the establishment of a Data Protection Authority of India, whose function is to monitor development in data processing and computer technology, to examine the law and order to evaluate its effect on data protection and give recommendations to receive representation from members of the public or any matter affecting data protection. The authority can investigate any data security breach and issue orders to safeguard the security interest of affected individuals in the personal data that has or is likely to have been compromised by such breaches. We now look at the area of computer libel and censorship. The reciprocal of the privacy debate is the very right administered to people to know about what matters and what does not matter or they may want to keep private, which refers to the freedom of information. The right of people to express their opinion about such issues and the publishing of such opinions, such as the freedom of the press. The common access areas in the content are electronic bulletin boards, email boxes and online files on the internet and public information networks. The tools used are spamming, flame mail, libel laws and censorship. Spamming it refers to the indiscriminate sending of unsolicited email or spam mails to many internet users. Spamming is undertaken by mass mailers of unsolicited advertisements and mail. This particular technique is used by cyber criminals to spread viruses and infiltrate computer systems. Flaming It is the practice of sending extremely critical, deliberate, and obscene email messages or news feeds to internet users. Flaming is prevalent on some of the internet's special interest news groups. There are many incidents of defamatory messages on the websites that have led to calls for censorship and lawsuits for libel. The presence of explicit material on the internet triggers lawsuits and censorship actions by groups and the government. So students, Let's now summarize what we have learned in this module. The nature of online activity compounds the privacy problems that we have already experienced in the material world. Every move we make on our PC, our smartphone, our tablets turn into a data point that trackers can easily collect and share. And you effectively agree to such collecting and sharing whenever you sign up for an online service and accept the privacy policy. The privacy concerns are posing a barrier to the development of e-commerce. It's an issue that online business cannot afford to ignore because privacy concerns are blocking the internet sales. The key is that companies that are doing business on the web need to manage and meet the consumer's expectations when privacy is concerned. A website with a privacy statement tells consumers that their privacy right is being considered. As big data grows, enterprises need a robust data privacy solution to help prevent breaches and enforce security in a complex IT environment. The internet is a worldwide network and everything must be developed for a global environment without national borders. Many users approve a privacy policy 
without reading it. And many of these policies are vague guidelines where it is completely impossible for users to foresee the scope and content of their consent to the processing of their data. Thank you.